if I were to tell you that in the majority of fish you catch and eat, you're eating worms. Well, I'm here to tell you that it's probably the truth. And I'm going to show you that it's all right. Rigging up for perch right now. Got a salmon steelhead trout rod, 30 pound suffix braided line. And I'm going to start off with Carolina rig, sandworm. I've also got some shrimp and something that you probably never seen, some of you probably have, is a little tiny ripstop. A lot of people have been catching perch on that Lucky Craft Flash Minnow. I got something a little bit smaller that I like the presentation of more, but the only thing is it's so light, you can't cast it far. So I got a little trick to be able to cast it like a bullet, two, three, four times as far. Let's get rigged up first, try to catch a perch, and eat some worms. Bait it up with some shrimp, size two hook. First cast with shrimp, second cast with camel sandworms. I'm just working my way down here over to this rock, hoping that these fish are stacked against this rock. No luck yet, I got one bite and that's all. Current is flowing this way, so I'm kind of just walking with the current, working this whole area right here. There's a bite. Been having this shrimp on for a while. I'm gonna change up to the sandworm once this shrimp gets off. Sandworm, let's try that right now. I'm walking to those big rocks now. Hopefully there's a little protected area where the fish are chilling. It's pretty rough right over here. There's a bite literally five feet from shore. First fish five feet from shore. Wow, look at this thing. Really nice colors. Man, that's a good looking fish right there. But I literally caught him right at this edge of the water, right at this first little break. Like literally, watch, right here. Not even gonna cast far at all. I'm just gonna, just gonna flick it out there. Watch this. That's all, all right? Right there, like 10 feet in. See that bite? Little school of them right up in close. That's not what I want. You know, I really think if you're perch fishing, it's really a waste of time to cast out as far as you can. Like, look how far back I am from the water's edge. Like most of the time, these perch are gonna be within 20 feet of where the water starts. So if you're casting out 50 to 75 yards, that's like a good 50 yards that you have to reel in before you're in the strike zone. So sometimes it's, it's so important to get as much quality time fishing as possible. And that means fishing where the fish are. If you're fishing in the strike zone, you can up your chances of getting fish. But if you're fishing where there's no fish are, you're just wasting time. Oh, there's a good one. Uh, no, not that great, but it's a fish. That one's not too bad kind of chunky I bet you I could show you some worms in this guy not bad I love that that kind of ultraviolet pattern on his back it's a good sign so I've got the camo sandworms and I've also got these blood worm these blood red colored sandworms got a couple bites on the camo which is the go-to for most surf perch fishermen Let's see how this one fares Really casting shallow, 25 feet out only. That was a good bite. A little bite. There's a bite. No. There's a seal out there too. Well, they're biting both red and there was camo.
good bite. Oh, there's a nice one. Oh, hell yeah, baby. That's a good perch right there. Oh, it came off. No, it didn't. He's still riding the wave, I think. Oh, it came. Oh, no. Damn, he hit that thing hard. He hit that bait hard. This is a good fresh fish right here. Let's see. Is this a red tail or a calico? That's a nice fish, man. Look at that red tail, baby. They need to be 10 and a half inches to keep, so let me get a measure on him. I don't know if you can see that, but he's over 11, so. I'm gonna keep this red tail and have him for lunch. Hell yeah. So I just caught this beautiful looking red tail perch, 11 inches long. They need to be 10 and a half to keep. So I'm gonna keep this, and once it's time to eat, I'm gonna fillet him up and let you see what's inside. Now I think I've found the fish. This fish is promised enough where I think I could catch one on a lure. So I fished this entire beach, maybe a little bit more than a quarter mile. No bites except right here where it's a little bit rocky. So I'm thinking that these fish are hanging out trying to get the bait. So in my little intro, I was talking about the Lucky Craft Flash Minnow, or I don't know if I edited that, that, edited that out, but anyway, a lot of people have been catching surf perch with that. They have catch halibut with that too. Kind of mimics an SP Minnow. It's a jerk bait. It's a hard bait, and it's a little bit too big for my liking. So I like this Rapala Ripstop. It's shorter, but the only problem with this is that it only weighs a quarter ounce. So if there's a little bit of wind, you can't cast far at all. So if you go to the golf store, there's some lead tape that they add to the back of their drivers so they can hit the golf ball a little bit farther, give it a little bit more mass, and you can hit the ball harder so I got five strips of that golf lead tape on the bottom of this ripstop it was a quarter ounce now with five strips in the front five strips right here in the back it's a half ounce but I want to go a little bit heavier even so I added five to the bottom here five to this front part and that would be half ounce and I added three more strips on top now this is three quarters of an ounce so I can cast this thing far and as long as I'm not covering the lip or the tail on the jerk bait it's going to swim just fine it won't lose any action so that's what I'm going to do catch my first fish on a artificial lure my first perch on an artificial lure let's do it together and with this three quarter ounce rip stop which was originally a quarter ounce it's amazing how far I can cast it shoots through the air like a bullet it goes at least a hundred feet well I fished with this three-quarter ounce ripstop for half an hour not a single bite so I don't know if this first perch was just dumb luck or not but I'm going back to the Carolina rig and the red sandworm and try it out but anyway if you ever wanted to add some weight to your light rigs that's how you do it that's one way to do it some golf tape lead tape this beautiful fish red tail perch 11 inches and even though I'm going to show you what's inside with the worms and all I'm still going to eat it so the first thing I'm going to do is scale it check this scaler out this thing was only a dollar or two dollars max you get it at any tackle store I got this one at Gus's tackle in San Francisco but anyways it's just got some blunt sides on it right there it's like a serrated edge but it's really blunt and all I do is go backwards on the scale and all the scales come right off easy peasy don't got to dull your knife at all and then you can eat the skin, which is one of the best parts. A lot of the fat is right there below the skin. And that's it. About 20 seconds. Just a little perch fillet right there. Just wait and watch the worms come out. All right, to speed up the process a little bit, I'm gonna put some salt on the outside of the fillet here. And if there's any worms, that should start to shrivel them up and they'll come to the surface. A 
Well, this is what happens when you plan something and it doesn't go according to plan. There are no worms in this fish. But you do eat worms, I can guarantee it. If you've eaten perch before in large quantities, you've eaten worms. But this one just happens to be a healthy fish. Anyway, uh, that was the video idea to eat these worms, but it looks like I'm just gonna have a meal instead. Actually, let me fillet the other side and then see if there's any worms on that side. Maybe I just got the good side. Well, looks like we've got no parasites here. No worms. But that meat does look pretty good. So I'm gonna eat it. So this is a new little grill I'm working with. A lot smaller, easy to transport. And the burner is this little package right here and it's got a self-igniter. I've seen this on another Bay Area YouTube channel, uh, Outdoor Chef Life. Taku, I've seen this on his channel. But anyway, this is the burner. It's pretty cool. Got it from Amazon for, for cheap, like eight bucks, something like that. You bring it out like that. You flip these things open. You just screw it on. This little dial here is to turn on the gas. And this button here is to ignite it. Boom, just like that. How simple, how convenient is that? See that heat? And these things are like five bucks, so man, can't get any better than that. Super, super portable, so convenient. Man, still no parasites, I don't see anything. So they're in there, they're in some of these fish. Anyway, one of the bad things about having a small little burner like this is that you really gotta find level ground or else it's gonna fall off. And I've got a problem with dropping things. But one of the best things about this little burner is that it's got this igniter. So just in case you find yourself out here in the middle of nowhere and you forgot your lighter, you can still get some, get a fire. Honestly, I haven't had too many red tail perch in my life, so this is gonna be a treat. It's gonna be a good comparison between all the barred, all the striped perches that I've had in the past. It's doing a little bit of butter right there. And I'm just gonna throw the perch in. Now most people, for some reason, they like to skin their perch, but right between the meat and right between the skin is this little fatty layer and it's got so much flavor. So I really recommend, keep the skin on next time, just make sure you scale it. Anyway, I guess this is a good video. I don't have to eat any worms. Mm, check that out, butter's got a nice little brown to it. Smells kind of nutty. Now for some reason, you don't really have to score perch skin. It doesn't really fold up on you that much. If you hold it down. That thing folded up on me like crazy. But if you hold it down, oh man, is it too late? Oh no, just shriveled up on me. Never mind, scratch that. Let me try that again. The important thing when you're cooking perch and you don't want the skin to curl up on you, especially if you haven't scored it, put it in and hold it down. Hold that thing down so it doesn't come up on you. See, look, this first filet right here, I didn't hold it down, but the second one I did. I would say the texture of that skin is very similar to bacon. And the taste too, because it has that fat which crisps up. That's one of the best parts of the fish, the skin. All right, let's compare this red tail perch to surf perch just from memory. I think if you ask almost anybody, they'll say that perch, best ones to eat, red tail, Calico, barred, walleye, with stripe being the last. And one of the reasons is because the red tails don't have, they're not as, as mushy, but this is pretty mushy. Still good for sure, but still mushy. All right, I know every video people are asking about the Butterboat 2. It's, it's pretty annoying, honestly. I've got it in my garage right now but I, I had it shipped over here from the Netherlands and they were supposed to ship bow rails too. And I wanted to add um, rod holders and downrigger, a bunch of different, different things on the bow rails. And I want to do the reveal all at once. So it's pretty annoying that it ha it's not here yet. Hopefully it's here within the month and I can do that video, but just wanted to let you guys know since I know a lot of people have been asking about it. All right, before I go, I want to know what perch you guys think are the best. There's about, seven, eight varieties of perch. So everybody's got their preference. To me, they kind of taste very similar. 
Now, red tails are the fun, most fun to catch, but what about eating? What do you guys think? 